gold, women, food and fabrics, the life of a king is much beyond this. Many kings are embroiled in hatred, intrigues, killings and wars. Above all this, what defines one king from the other is their devotion towards Yahweh or their swerving away to idolatry and paganism. With joy and warmness in my heart, I prayerfully welcome you again to the study of God's unchanging word, the Bible. We were looking at King Joas, the boy who ruled from age 7 onwards. He was mentored by Jehoiada the priest and lived right in the Lord's sight. The king was in the forefront, leading in the repair of the temple that had been long neglected. As we see leaders walked before the Lord, this was a good period for the southern kingdom. This was not the case for the northern kingdom of the ten tribes. Jehoahaz, the son of Jehu, ruled over Israel in Samaria. He followed the sinful steps of Jeroboam, attracting God's wrath that gave them away to Hazael, king of Aram. Jehoahaz was succeeded by his son, Jehoaz, who walked after him doing evil in the Lord's sight. Jeroboam has become the standard of evil for Israel. It was even in this situation that God continued to show endless kindness when Israel sought His mercy. May you be richly blessed as I welcome you again. 2 Kings chapter 14 verse 1 In the second year of Joash, son of Jehoaz, king of Israel, Amaziah, son of Joash, king of Judah, began to reign. The king on the throne now is Amaziah. He is the son of Joash, who was also the king of Judah. The fact that there are two kings by the same name is certainly confusing to add to our confusion in pronunciating these very tongue-twisting names. There are two kings with the same names. Can you imagine? The chronological table will help clear up the confusion. Now notice verse 2. He was 25 years old, friends. Amaziah, when he became king, just 25. And he reigned in Jerusalem 29 years. His mother's name was Jehoadin. She was from Jerusalem. Amaziah's mother, her name is given. The mothers of these kings will receive the credit if their sons are good kings. They will also receive the blame if their sons are bad. Amaziah was a good king and so the credit goes to his wonderful mother. Mothers must be appreciated for the way they bring up their children. Really these days, we don't give credit where credit is due. Now, verse 3. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, but not as his father David had done. In everything he followed the example of his father Joash. Amaziah, the son of Joash, succeeded the throne of Judah. And we are told that he did what was right in the sight of the Lord, although... He failed up to measure up to David's standard. We also find that the civil war between the two kingdoms, constant bickering, constant civil war between the northern and the southern kingdom, continued even during Amaziah's period. Verse 19. They conspired against him, the people that is, in Jerusalem, and he fled to Lashish. But they sent men after him to Lashish. They killed him there. He was brought back by horse and was buried in Jerusalem with his fathers in the city of David. Verse 21. Then all the people of Judah took Azariah, who was 16 years old, and made him king in the place of his father Amaziah. 
He was the one who rebuilt Elath and restored it to Judah after Amaziah rested with his fathers. Amaziah fled to the city of Lashish, you notice, where there was a fortress. It offered refuge to people who sought to capture the king. Now verse 23, we read of another Jeroboam, Jeroboam II, who reigns in the southern kingdom of Israel. Not much is said strangely about Azariah, but now we will consider Jeroboam in the 15th year of Amaziah, son of Joash, king of Judah, Jeroboam, son of Joash, king of Israel, became king in Samaria, the capital of the northern kingdom was Samaria, and he reigned 41 years. Verse 24, he did evil in the eyes of the Lord and did not turn away from the sins of Jeroboam, the first Jeroboam, son of Nebat, which he had caused Israel to commit. He was the one who restored the boundaries of Israel, this Jeroboam too, from Libo Hamath to the Sea of Arabah, which is also called the Dead Sea, the Sea of Arabah, in accordance with the word of the Lord, the God of Israel, spoken through his servant, notice this name, Jonah, son of Amittai, the prophet from Gath, Heeper. First time Jonah's name occurs in God's word. So Jonah was during the period of Jeroboam too. Jeroboam did evil in the sight of the Lord. He did, however, restore the border of Israel according to Jonah, the prophet. This is an historical reference to Jonah who wrote the book of Jonah later. This confirms the fact that Jonah was a real person for those who are skeptics. He was indeed a prophet in Israel and a great prophet. Jeroboam too finally dies and Zechariah comes to the throne. Now we are closely and slowly moving to the end of this nation. Azariah or Uzziah reigns from Judah. Verse 1. In the 27th year of Jeroboam, king of Israel, Azariah, son of Amaziah, king of Judah, began to reign. He was 16 years old when he became king and he reigned in Jerusalem, notice, 52 years. A 16-year-old king reigning for 52 years. His mother's name was Jokaliah. She was also from Jerusalem. Verse 3. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, just as his father Amaziah had done. But you notice, the high places, however, were not removed. The people continued to offer sacrifices and burn incense there. In many ways, Uzziah, Azariah, was a good king. However, he did something that he should not have done. He intruded into the priest's office. For this, Uzziah was later smitten with leprosy. We read this in Second Chronicles chapter 26, verses 15 to 21. It broke Isaiah's heart when he died because Isaiah was afraid that Azariah's successors, that is Uzziah's successors, would lead this nation back into the ways of their fathers by distracting them from the true and living faithful God. Azariah's fears were well grounded, for his grandson did just that. Now you notice verse 33. Jotham reigns over Judah. He was 25 years old, Jotham, when he became king and he reigned in Jerusalem 16 years. His mother's name was Jerusha, daughter of Zadok. 
he is rated as a good king, friends, and the Lord records the name of his mother, you notice once again, Jerusha. Verse 34, He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, just as his father Uzziah had done. The high places, however, were not removed. The people continued to offer sacrifice, burn incense there. Jotham rebuilt the upper gate of the temple of the Lord. This is important to notice. His contribution to the nation of Israel. He also tolerated false worship, which should and would eventually send his people to bondage and captivity. Now we consider the first few verses of chapter 16, verse 2 of Second uh, Kings chapter 16. Ahaz was 20 years old when he became king and he reigned in Jerusalem 16 years. Now a very sad commentary on Ahaz's life. Unlike David, his father, he did not do what was right in the eyes of the Lord. He walked in the ways of the kings of Israel. He even sacrificed his son in the fire. Following the detestable ways of the nations the Lord had driven out before the Israelites. Verse 4, he offered sacrifices, burned incense, the king himself, at high places. Can you imagine, friends, on hilltops and under every spreading tree? This is Ahaz, one of my friends recently told me, sin is reachable. Sin is desirable, isn't it? In many of our lives, sin is also entertained. It is enjoyable. It is reachable. It is desirable. It is enjoyable. But the consequence of sin is terrible. And we will note this in the life of Ahaz. Verse 5, Then Rezin, king of Aram or Syria, and Pekah, son of Ramaliah, king of Israel. Rezin and Pekah, marched up to fight against Jerusalem and besieged Ahaz, but they could not overpower him. Let me add a footnote here, friends. Rezin is the king of Aram. Pekah is the king of Israel. How can Israel, God's people, form a coalition with Syria, Aram, and fight against God's own people in the southern kingdom? It's strange, but Israel... And Rezin, the king of Aram, form a coalition versus Judah here. Notice what happens. At that time, Rezin, king of Aram, recovered Elath for Aram by driving out the men of Judah. Edomites then moved into Elath and have lived there to this day. Rezin drives out God's people and Edomites occupy the land. A very, very, very sad state of affairs. Verse 7. Ahaz sent messengers to say to Tiglath Pileser, king of Assyria, I am your servant, your vassal. He's writing to the king of Assyria, you notice. Israel formed a bond with Syria and Judah forms a coalition with Assyria, come up, save me out of the hand of king of Aram and of the king of Israel who are attacking me, was it? And Ahaz took the silver, you notice, and the gold found in the temple of the Lord and in the treasuries of the royal palace and sent it as a gift to the king of Assyria, robbing the God of Israel to give it to a king of Assyria. He pays for this, and dearly he pays for this. Verse 10, Then King Ahaz went to Damascus to meet Tiglath Pileser, king of Assyria. He saw an altar in Damascus, you notice, and he sent Uriah the priest to sketch the altar with detailed plans for its construction. God doesn't need anyone's help, friends. Last of all, an architect, but this is what Ahaz does. King Ahaz took away the side panels, removed the basins from the movable stands, 
he removed the sea from the bronze bulls that supported it and set it on a stone base. Ahaz is showing utter contempt and disrespect for the temple of the true and living God. Verse 18, He took away the Sabbath canopy that had been built at the temple and removed the royal entryway outside the temple of the Lord in deference to the king of Assyria. As for the other events of the reign of Ahaz and what he did, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Judah, an oft-repeated phrase in the book of Kings? Ahaz rested with his fathers and was buried with them in the city of David, and Hezekiah, his son, succeeded him. The chapter concludes, friends, with the death of Ahaz. The record of the facts is given that his son Hezekiah reigned after him. It is an amazing thing that a godless man like Ahaz should have a son like Hezekiah, the story of whose reign we shall see in the next chapter. These are the reasons God permitted Israel, his own people, to go into captivity. One, they disobeyed God. You notice verse 17 of 2 Kings chapter 16, the Lord warned Israel and Judah, though all and through all his prophets and seers, turn from your evil ways, observe my commands and decrees in accordance with the entire law that I commanded your fathers to obey, and that I delivered you through my servants, the prophets. The second reason is that they doubted God. Verse 14, But they would not listen and were stiff-necked as their fathers who did not trust in the Lord their God. And the third reason is they defied God in that they refused to obey and observe the Sabbatic year for 490 years. Remember, God had given the Sabbath and the Jubilee for celebration of the oppressed and the depressed peoples. Every seventh Sabbath, that was every 49 years. So for 490 years, they refused to observe the Sabbatic year. They rejected, verse 15, his decrees and the covenant he made with their fathers and the warnings he had given them. They followed worthless things and they themselves became worthless. Whoever you follow, you will become like that person. You follow Jesus, you will become like Jesus. In the twelfth year, Second Kings chapter 17 verses 1 and 2, of Ahaz the king of Judah, Hoshea son of Elah became king of Israel in Samaria, and he reigned nine years. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord, but not like the kings of Israel who preceded him. You notice the kings of Israel form a plumb line for the behavior of the kings of Judah. Verse 3, Shalmaneser, king of Assyria, came up to attack Hoshea, who had been Shalmaneser's vassal and had paid him tribute. But the king of Assyria discovered that Hoshea was a traitor, for he had sent envoys to Saul, king of Egypt, and he no longer paid tribute to the king of Assyria, as he had done year by year. Therefore Shalmaneser seized him, put him in prison. The king of Assyria invaded the entire land, marched against Samaria and laid siege to it for three years. Now the third nation we heard of Israel, Syria, Assyria and now Egypt. Wasn't Egypt the same land from which God had delivered them? But Israel kept going back to the same sin because of one reason they thought they could live their lives on their own. Pride is the cancer of the soul, my friend. Its root goes deep. Only a little left behind sprouts again. A little pride will sprout again. It needs to be uprooted. 
its seeds lodge in the tiniest encouraging cracks of our soul and it flourishes in good soil friend the danger of pride is that it feeds on god's goodness i usually say this israel's pride took them for a ride friends because they rejected god the perfect guide but friends humble yourself in the sight of the lord and he will surely 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 lift you up i believe you enjoyed the bible study dear friends while names after names could confuse you but our takeaway from this lesson surely is the fact that without god peace and stability elude an individual or a nation the absence of god is a recipe for disaster and especially in the situation or opportunity that involves power and glory the pressure to achieve anything with any means could be overwhelming so what should worry us is the menace of idolatry and paganism they could be in our lives in a dormant form from previous beliefs and practices we followed or they could slowly and subtly slide into us without even realizing them the pride of life the lust for wealth position prestige and pleasure all this could draw us away from god into anything else how is your walk with god dear brothers and sisters do you still allow him to be your lord over your life speaking and directing you is it only in god that we have our complete fulfillment and contentment i hope to see you again till then ponder on this and god bless you